In this video I will discuss dynamic corrections which are also called normal move out corrections. These dynamic corrections are applied to common depth point or CDP order data to reduce all source receiver slant travel times into zero offset vertical times. Like static corrections, the dynamic corrections are also in the form of a time shift. But in case of static corrections, a constant time shift is applied to the whole trace, thus the relative difference between two events remains the same, hence they are called static corrections. On the other hand, in case of dynamic corrections, each event undergoes a different time shift depending on the velocity of the reflecting interface, thus stretching or squeezing of the trace will occur. Now let's consider CDP gathers from a common depth point. The reflected ray path and its seismic event are shown. As the source receiver offset increases, the travel time along the ray path also increases. Thus the events from the same depth point are delayed due to the increasing source receiver offset. In this way, we have a hyperbolic travel time curve. Let's consider a ray path from the source to the receiver reflected from a depth point. X is the source receiver offset and Tx is the two-way time as shown by the event in the trace. In NMO correction, our aim is to reduce the slant time to vertical time by reducing the source receiver offset to zero. Now as the offset decreases, the two-way time also decreases and the reflected event in the trace is shifted up. Now let's consider reflected ray paths from a horizontal layer and their time gathers. X is the offset, Tx is the slant two-way time, T0 is the vertical two-way time at zero offset. We have to shift all these events to zero offset. Thus NMO correction is simply the difference between Tx and T0. If we consider one side of the ray paths, we have a right angle triangle. Here two sides of the triangle x by 2 and tx by 2 are known. We know that if two sides of a triangle are known, the third side which in this case is t0 by 2 can be easily computed. But there is one problem, x is a distance and has units of space and tx is time. And we know that the bridge between space and time is velocity. Thus we need to know the precise velocity of the reflector in order to convert both sides of the triangle into the same units. The velocity is determined through velocity analysis. So if we have the NMO velocity, we can convert the offset x to time. Now considering the Pythagorean theorem, we have the term for tx and substituting its value, we get the NMO equation. Here x is the offset and VNMO is the NMO velocity. If the layer has a dip phi, then the NMO velocity is substituted with the apparent velocity v divided by the cosine of the dip phi. Now let's consider a single event CTP gather with NMO velocity of 2250 meters per second. If NMO correction is applied using the exact NMO velocity of 2250 meters per second, then the events are flattened as shown. If a lower velocity is used in the NMO correction, then due to lower velocity, we get a larger NMO time shift and thus we get an overcorrected gather. Similarly, if a higher velocity is used, we get an undercorrected gather. Thus we have to apply the appropriate NMO velocity to flatten all the events. We then add or stack all the traces to get a stack section. The stacking removes random noise and due to this we have an improved signal to noise ratio.